For this week's collection, we are going to be using the Freezen Season collection from Simple Stories. It includes the uh, element sticker sheet along with 12 sheets of pattern paper. Um, I'm choosing, to, we're going to need six pages for our tutorial today to make our four pages and the um, pocket page type elements we're not going to use along with these two sheets. Um, we also need four pieces of cardstock, uh, two ba basic black from Stamping Up, and two mint macaron, macaron, macaron from Stamping Up. Um, hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. We have cutting diagrams in my tutorial videos, and I just kind of want to let you know how to read them. So there's the number and top in inches, and that's going to be the size that we're going to cut that cut piece into. And there's a number below it in a circle. So a lot of the times we're making four pages or six pages um, when we're using these cutting diagrams and all these cut pieces can sort of get very disorganized. So that number inside of the circle there represents a pile that you're gonna put that cut piece into. So for, pa for a four page tutorial, we're gonna make four piles. And for a six page tutorial, we're gonna make six piles. Um, so the numbers are going to be either one through four or one through six so page one is going to have all the cut pieces that have a circle with the number one inside and so on and so on for the four or six pages so now we're going to go ahead and take all pieces of our cardstock and we are going to cut one inch in one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom and we're going to make a straight line on all four sides of, of each of these pieces of cardstock. What we're basically doing is cutting a 10 by 10 inch square out of the center of this piece of cardstock. The border is going to be put into our pile and the center, the 10 by 10 inch center is going to be put to the side and we're gonna be cutting it with another cutting diagram as soon as we're done cutting out all of these squares. Now we're going to pull out our 10 by 10 inch cutouts that we had just cut earlier and we're going to start cutting them with these cutting diagrams. Now we're going to go ahead and cut the backgrounds for our pages. So we are going to be cutting the barcode strip off along with half an inch and then half an inch on the other side. So we're going to be making an 11.5 inch by 11.5 inch uh, square for all of our background papers. Hey everyone, so I got some feedback on, you know, people saying that they'd like me to explain and talk a little bit more in my videos and especially talk about embellishments. Sorry about the cat. Um, so when I'm, I really don't go into these collections with a plan. So I, I do have them all cut into specific pieces and that's sort of my foundation. That's where I start. Sometimes I'm not inspired and I just need a system in place to give me a foundation to start with. And then from there, I can kind of visualize what I want. And that's the whole 
uh, idea behind my cutting guide. So once I'm done with the cutting guide and I start assembling my pages, I sometimes will flip the pages around and uh, sometimes I'll like the back side a little bit more than I like the front, but I kind of end up choosing what I choose. And um, I like to use paper la layering to create dimension on the page. And a lot of times you'll notice that a, a sheet that goes from one end to the other for me when I choose my paper is it's usually going to be striped. It's either going to be plaid or striped or something with a um, a pattern that I like that coordinates with a lot of the embellishments that I have in the kit. Uh, I place white cardstock in place of where I put a picture and I'll kind of explain that maybe in another video. Um, there's a reason why I do that. But for me, I don't want my pictures to be uh, I don't want my pictures to be on my channel. I feel like that's really personal and I feel like my kids would eventually use it as an excuse to be honorary about me taking pictures. So here you'll notice the way I'm putting the paper is I'm going to be using that green sort of as a mat behind that black and I'm going to be using that pink as like I'm, I centered that 3x4 picture mat on my pink border. Um, so sometimes what I'll do is the way that I layer, the way that I place my layers. So here for an example, I'm going to be using that black and white polka dot paper as the bottom of the mat for my black cardstock, but then I'll be also be using that green solid cardstock as the top layer for my black, that same piece of black cardstock. So it's kind of strategic the way that I place that black polka dot with that green mat on top so that it kind of layers that black piece of cardstock, if that makes sense. Okay, and then from there, we can get started with embellishments now. So I really believe in trying to keep scrapbooking simple. And it's kind of a long story, but I kind of got out of scrapbooking because it got too complicated and it got too much about keeping up with new products. and and needing different tools and crickets and big shots and all these other things which are awesome but I don't feel like when it comes to like doing the quantity of scrapbooking that I do I feel like when you start to add all those things in it gets way too overwhelming and it takes such a long time and when you sit down in your scrapbooking space you just really don't know where to start um I decided that like when I'm not doing a specialty type of project like cards or something, when it, came, it comes to my scrapbooking, I just want to keep it really simple. And by doing that, I'm not going to feel so overwhelmed when I sit down. And so a lot of times I use layering and I use the embellishments that come with the kit to their full advantage and I will use foam tape to create different layers on some of the flatter pieces. So when I'm placing embellishments on my page, I really don't have any rules and I don't have a plan in place and I don't like, I don't really have a system for that. So it's always gonna be a little bit different, but I do like to create clusters. So I, most of the time, depending on the embellishment type, I like to create a cluster of at least three different items like in the corner or on a section of the page that has like a little bit of a hole like there's not as much there <clears throat> and a lot of times when we buy a collection they have either banners or they have like sort of like titling so this one has chili uh, freezing season, it has bundle up, and it had another one. So if I'm making four pages and there's four titles, generally speaking, I'm going to make sure that each page has one of those titles on it. So that's kind of where I start with that. And like here, I felt like I've done that before too much where I late where, where I put the picture frames like side by side. So I dropped that one down and I'm, I was decided to create two embellishment spaces, one at the top and one at the bottom. And um, there again, I just kind of clustered those three <clears throat> with the town in the background, the word, 
and what's nice about simple stories is that they almost always have like these little um, these little rectangle words like or, or phrases and they work awesome for just filling in like and helping with your little clusters so I really like simple stories collections for that um, and in this particular collection they had those little trees and I really wish there was more of those like it they look really nice um, my pages do tend to get a little bit thick as you can see there like I actually put a chipboard sticker on top of a chipboard sticker so um, you know if you don't like that then you know there might be something else you want to put there now with this collection because I made a lot of winter pages already um, and if they do have some really nice um, journaling uh, like three by four or four by six elements I really like to include them in there because then it sort of eliminates me from having to come up with something when I'm at the journaling stage of my scrapbooking so if they have it I'm gonna try and incorporate it and that's what I did here by including that one three by four cutout element from one of our spare papers by adding it in there. And here, sorry, I kind of drifted down off the off the off camera a little bit. Um, I don't always catch myself. My monitor is like off to the side and it's not always perfect. So uh, a lot of times with the embellishments, I don't really have a plan. So you'll see that I just kind of um, like that I, I move things around and I don't really have a, a plan in place. So here we had some, like I had a four by four element from one of the, from the paper that, that looked like lined paper. And I knew I wanted to put the, some of the titling on that because I just, I like, it sort of had like that feel to it, like a, like a notebook or something like that. So I really liked how that turned out. And then I just decided to use the rest of the embellishments to frame the picture spot. Yeah, and, and I mean, if you ever want to do something different than me, or if it doesn't really work with the picture that you're trying to put on there, then I would just change it up. And you can put something else there. Like if the polar bear doesn't really work for you, you could easily put a tree there or the other snowman or something like that. sometimes it's easy to get carried away and make the page too busy and that's where I found like this is what I was doing with that page and I just didn't really like that so I decided to switch it up so here I didn't pop up the snow globe um, but I did pop up this saying that says flurries and I accidentally cut it with the scissors so if you're doing this don't do that <laughs> unless you want it like that but I did that by accident, so um, I used the pop-ups kind of closer to the L and the U so that they would look like they were a little bit more, but you know what, that's okay. Accidents happen sometimes, like you're probably the only person that's ever really going to notice. So in this bottom corner here, um, with the snowmen, this is a, an example of me trying to do a cluster again. So I used the trees and the snowmen in different proportions on the page just to make it look like it was not really a scene, but kind of a scene. And kind of just kind of made them work well together. What this collection really could have used um, was like, like glittery um, type of brads, like brads that really like or more like diamondy kind of a thing. Like I think that would have looked really good with this collection just to jazz it up a little bit, but I think it looks fine just the way it is as well. <laughs> 